afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Vitamin C's with me, your boy, Adam Taylor. As usual, I'm joined by my homie, my compadre, my co-host in crime, Mr. Tim Shields. And moving forwards, we're going to have a third co-host, one of our good friends. I call him the energy guy because Wayne just comes in hot every single time. One of my favorite people to podcast with. Joining us every episode moving forward, apart from when he's traveling to cover the Niners, Mr. Wayne Breezy. What's popping, Wayne? What's going on, man? I got energy because I was I was looking at the, the the worksheets and I'm like, oh, I'm about to shoot all of these down. Like, I can't wait. Let's get started. Let's <laughs> what worksheets? The, the the show sheet that we sent over. Yeah, man. So you started talking mm. about Grant, and I'm like, I know he's not requesting that amount of money. I mean, I know he is, but come on. gotta have a we need to sit grant williams down and have a a, a gentleman conversation <laughs> this oh, is an intervention <laughs> right <laughs> which is funny because like years ago remember i kept saying listen we gotta make sure grant a part of this team it was because of his role and he played it well and he's still doing that that that's what he's doing well he's doing his role but he wants to get paid i, I can't i'm not knocking him for getting paid it's just probably not gonna be with the celtics yeah, okay. So first of all, I remember going backwards and forwards with you on on Grant. And now I'm all the way on the other side where I'm defending Grant against people. I hear you, bro. <laughs> so it's like, yo, but like I mean, so full disclosure, we're talking about like Grant's um sophomore season when he just had a the worst season of his career. He was being I played out of position. I, I saw it. I had the DC <laughs> vision. We call him Ben Simmons. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we were. We were calling him short Ben Simmons. <laughs> It was a it was a hard time. It was a hard time, right? So we fast forward to now. As everybody knows, Grant Williams is a an unrestricted. No, sorry, he's a restricted free agent at the end of the season. Correcting myself there, the Celtics can match whatever offer sheet comes in. But according to a report from Mark Stein yesterday, and in my opinion, the, not many people come more credible than Mark Stein, right? Okay. Like him, he, his podcast with Chris Haynes, like this dude's plugged in. So the report reads to, to the, the Celtics, to no one's surprise, did not trade Grant Williams. We're going to fast forward through that bit. Yet rumbles persist that various teams are monitoring the situation and are curious about Williams' future. Williams is put poised to become a restricted free agent and is said to be seeking a contract in the Calden Johnson San Antonio 20 million a year range. No, 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 no. No, so twenty million a year is like right. Okay, so look at it like this, yeah. When Grant, <laughs> when Grant didn't sign an extension with the Celtics, the the reporting came out from Michael Scotto. I think that's how you say his name. Um, that the Celtics wanted to offer him twelve point five. Grant okay. Grant wanted around about fourteen. Mm-hmm. Since then, I've heard reports right. It was fourteen. Now it's sixteen. Then it went from 16 to 18. Now we're at 20. By the end of the season, we're going to be talking about like Grant wants to max. 24 million. Like, yeah. what are we talking about here? <laughs> How can you keep adding 2 million on every report, dude? Like, what, what is it you're trying to buy? Um, I don't think, I think 20 million is far too high. I always set a bar for myself personally. Like, if I was in the front office with how he's played this year, how his shots been sustainable from last season, one of the main things that I said during the off season was, Yo, if I'm going to pay Grant, ideally I'd like to see that shooting kind of improvement from last year stick around this season because the last thing you want to do is pay him and then he turns into Duncan Robinson, right? So you you wait until the end of this season. Now you've seen that that three-point shot's legit because you've got a two-year sample size. I'm going to go as high as 18 and I feel like that's pushing it. Like I'm overpaying at 18, but I'm keeping the core together. His versatility defensively made sense. 20 now. So if someone wants to offer him 20, cool. But uh, the Celtics should not match that. Yeah, I, I agree. I, Tim's I, out I here want... talking on mute. I don't know. I hit mute, and then I thought I hit on mute, and then I hit mute again, apparently. 20 million is a lot. 20 million is a lot for anybody. My counterpoint to that is, you can't sign anyone else with that money. And that's the problem that the Celtics are in, right? Like you don't have any, it, it's not like you're operating with cap space and you're just signing them into cap space. This okay. is a restricted free agent that you're able to retain for whatever cap hit it comes in at. Do I think you should be paid 20 million? Absolutely not. It's just, if a team comes out and operates like that and they give him that offer, 
where do you go from there? Does it turn into a sign and trade situation? Do you know, do you try and turn it into a, a trade exception or do you try and get something of value in return on a sign and trade? It's just really, really tricky. And I don't, I do think it's funny that the number keeps growing, even though I don't think that Grant's play has been one consistent or two, like been improving gradually to like make it worthy of that raise, man. Like that's crazy amount of money to be asking. And I just don't think he's, I don't think he's there. Like I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, and that, you use the word consistent. I I feel like you get one game with Grant, you like, yo, if he does this every game, and I, I'm not talking about hitting 10 three pointers. I'm just talking about his consistent play. You know what I'm saying? Taking the right shots, not being afraid, playing the, the, the crazy defense, being energy, doing all the stuff he has to do. If he continues to do that consistently, then maybe you could talk about that inflating number a little bit. But when you go from that type of a game, to a game when he becomes like insignificant, he's scared to shoot the ball, he's passing the ball late, and I'm not trying to talk about his deficiencies, it's just like you're getting two versions of Grant every night, it's a different version, you don't know which one you're going to get, so the consistency is the key, and when I'm looking at his stats, and I'm looking at his numbers, and I'm like, well, I mean, he's improved all across the board, but it's not drastic. It's not like a, a crazy improvement. And that's because he's probably not getting a lot of the minutes. And that's another thing. You're going to pay this dude 20 million a year or 20 plus million a year or whatnot. And he's not, he's, 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 he's giving you what, 24, 25 minutes a game. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, and I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it with Grant. I love Grant. I think Grant needs to be a Celtic. I need, he needs to figure out a way. That's why I said we need to sit down and have a conversation. Listen, you want to be with this team. Look at the youth on this team and look where this team is going to be. Don't think about this. Think about dynasty. I, like That's what he should be thinking. And then his money will come. I probably, it'll, it'll come. But uh, I don't know. His agents want him to get paid because his agents want to get paid. I get it. I, it's business. Oh. Yeah, I think I think that any goodwill that was there between like Grant and the front office probably took a huge slap Ooh. once there was no deal made, right? Because like they always say that the the rookie extension is kind of the team showing that they have faith in you, they're happy with how you've developed, and but I think that with Grant, it was the development came so late, right? Like he had a good first season, but then like stonk the place out during his sophomore year. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you do want to see consistency there. So are we really going to pay you more than 12.5 a year based off one year of good three-point shooting when you struggled out of the gates? You were an absolute mess for your second year. And now, obviously, he was like, no, I know I'm that guy. I know I can play the role. I want to be paid like that. They're like, we want to see more. This is how I envision the conversation going. Is there like did that loyalty take a hit? Does Grant feel some way where he wants to be elsewhere? I mean, the team I've kind of said that makes the most sense for me is is Detroit. Like now, does that change now? James Wiseman's there, or does having Grant there kind of allow James Wiseman to develop a bit slower anyway? Right, because Grant's going to be at that four spot. He's defensively sound. He can switch over to guard fives if James Wiseman's caught out of position. Detroit just make a whole lot of sense for me in terms of a team that would want to go after him. And they could afford it in terms of cap space. Would they do a sign and trade? Would they hard cap themselves? I don't know. But for me, it's like there are going to be teams out there that are, that are going to push Boston's limits and going to be like, because then you're screwing with Boston's cap right too. And Boston have to be like, it's not just this year we need to worry about. Exactly. Next year, we got Jalen Brown hitting free agency as an unrestricted free agent, unless he becomes super max eligible this year. The face injury, he missed time because of that fight. It was like um, it was like um, a, an abductor strain in his groin. So he missed time off the abductor strain. Now he's missing time off the facial injury. All of these things add up when you're trying to make an all NBA team, right? Because that's how he's going to become super max eligible at this point. Uh, so you have to plan for that too. You know what I'm saying? And the Celtics did a good move by extending Horford, bringing that salary down to a far more manageable way. But they're going to be a tax team. Now, I don't know whether Grant's going to stick around. Personally, I think that you can't replace his level of versatility with a a mid-level exception. It's just not going to happen. If you lose him, you're a worse team because of it. So you do everything you can to keep him, but there's got to be a line in the sand somewhere. But that's the question, though. Like, how much much worse – like I, I don't see, I, 
I don't see how the Celtics would be that much worse. I I I like the versatility that he brings. I like that you're gonna possibly get the three point shooting from him. Uh, but how much worse would the Celtics be? They just picked up another big man. He clearly has no problems. He is not afraid to shoot the three. So you're getting that. I know it's two different positions, but they can move Muscala around as well. So like, how much worse will they really be if you know? I think it comes on the defensive end, though, right? Like offensively, you can you can find shooters that can shoot forty percent. There's there's a, there's a bunch of them because their value diminishes in the playoffs. So teams are happy to just kind of swap these guys out. Yeah. It's the defensive end of the floor where he he's kind of really I wouldn't say irreplaceable, but tough to replace, right? Because then now you need to bring in two players to do what Grant was doing as one. You need to bring in a defensive wing. That's a stopper that can go, that can slide down to a three or slide up to a that's five. That can shoot, and then you need somebody that can shoot. Now that's two roster spots to fill what Grant was doing in one. I'm not saying it's irreplaceable. I'm just saying it's tough to do when you don't when that twenty million you could pay Grant doesn't exist in the free agent market because you're already over the tax. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. I think with Grant Williams too, one thing that's been disappointing this year. Um, unrelated to the stat sheet is just the overall complaining to the refs. Like, I just think it's a bad look considering the role that he plays in this team. Like you're in a contract year. I think that stuff is the detractor to the team. And I think it changes the way that referees call the games for the Celtics. Like, I think it's just, that's just a personal opinion, but I don't know. It, it, it's just something that I've noticed and just the overall energy and the attitude. It's like, look, it, people complain when Jason Tatum does it. And, like, Jason Tatum is a superstar franchise leader, like, face of the franchise. But Grant Williams does that stuff. It's like, okay, come on, Grant. Like, settle no. down. Like, go ahead and just, like, take a breather, man. Like, you don't need to be like this. There's no reason for you to do this. It's not going to get I you I live anywhere, in England. Man. Do you know how often I see highlights of soccer where – there's like a, the referee blows a whistle and it's not one guy it's like 11 just cur- <laughs> just surrounding this dude like proper bullying him like like chewing him out dude and that's like four five six seven times a game so when everybody's like man i don't want grant moaning at, like moaning to the refs and chewing at the refs i'm like yo it's one guy man i'm fine with that like that it's a one-on-one it's a, it's fine like i don't know it's not because he needs to get back on defense and yeah and whatnot but Dude, what I'm used to when I'm seeing an entire like soccer team be like, "What? No!" And then everyone surrounding this dude, you're like, "This guy must be scared for his life right now." <laughs> like, yeah, if Grant <laughs> wants to chew a guy out, yeah, I, dude, that's funny. I, I don't, I don't think I have a problem with him complaining to the refs, but it does take away from him getting back on defense. But the refs need to be officials and call the fouls that are fouls, and 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 that's the issue. It's that, consistency, really right? The issue. And, and like, it's consistency it once again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's you're the, right though. Right, like if you called it last week and now you're not calling it this week, how, how am I meant to know? We just changes talked on about a game by game basis. So yeah. if you're not getting consistency from the NBA officials, how are the players supposed to be consistent? And then when they react differently to something, and, and you know what, Tim, to your defense, I I understand where you're coming from. I don't think that's his mindset. <laughs> I don't think he could just brush the dirt off his shoulders and keep it moving because it's messing with him psychologically because he expends a lot of energy when he's out there. That's what you said. That's You can't replace that. You can't replace his energy. You can't replace his grit. And then you can't replace his defense. You can't replace his offense. You're right. He's era, He's so somewhat irreplaceable. He's vital. He's vital. I like that word. That's the that's the right word. That's the right word. He's the vital part. Just like Wayne, man, we haven't had you on the show for since we stopped doing that one together back in the day. Yeah, uh, we haven't been able to replace you, man. You're the new Grant Williams, bro. Hey, man, that's the real. Man. I'm not real asking MVP, you, bro. I just, I just want to. We don't here. have 20 million. I'm sorry. <laughs> not yet. Please. Not yet. Yo, <laughs> you watch know, I'm in my mindset. I I play my role. So I'm not gonna go outside the <laughs> means of my role. Now, if you ask me to do something different, then I'll I'll step it up. You know, this is my Yo, so talking about consistency, I want to move on. I want to look at, oh, I dropped a pen. Talking about consistency, I want to move on. I want to talk about some inconsistency from oh. Peyton Pritchard. In terms of, we hear that he goes on Evan Turner's podcast, starts talking about, I want a bigger role. You know, he's like, yeah, I want a bigger role on the team where, you know, and he just wants to play, dude. That's basically what he was saying. Could he have worded it a bit better? Maybe. But, you know, coming up to the trade deadline, I felt like it was his way of like sending a message, like putting a little bit of pressure on that front office. 
then he doesn't get traded and speaks to Gary Washburn. Like, you know, I was kind of hoping to be traded. I was expecting it. And we know that Brad, from all the reports that have come out since, that Brad kind of offered him and Gallinari in a package for Jakob Pertl, but that didn't work out. He ended up going over to Toronto. So now, you know, the Celtics won a game. Brett, Peyton Pritchard plays well. Peyton Pritchard speaks to the media. I'm a professional at the end of the day. I'm going to work, and any minute I'm going to play because I love basketball. Uh, this whole thing about what everybody's been saying, you know, I love this city, love the organization, love the teammates. This is one of the best. I'm here and I, I do love it here. I'm committed. I want to help this team in any way to win a championship. So that's what he's saying now, right? That's but like bullshit, last week, bro. you wanted out, bro. That's bullshit. Like, yo, <laughs> if you want to play basketball, then shut the freak up and just play basketball. Yo, you P, 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 you got a role, right? You know what your role is, dog. It is what it is. It, it's like, you got you, you either you, you wait your turn to your contracts out, then you go ahead and you go do your thing. But don't sit here and say certain stuff and put certain things out there in the universe and then feel some type of way when people take it and, and do what their job is. They're going to take it and run with it. Right. And so it does sound like he's being a bit of a brat at the end of the day. And I'm like, dude, we're trying to win a championship with the best team in the NBA. You're playing a vital role right you have a vital position piece right and all of a sudden you just complaining that you want to you want more playing time and you want a bigger role and this is that and the third dude that's cool but you do that shit in the off season you don't do it in the middle of the season when your team's at first place trying to stay at first place and then they got to deal with all the uh the, the the injuries and all that stuff that's coming about i just feel like he's dead wrong and i can see the team not trading him to make him suffer. I think that's kind of like what's going down. And he still got to play his role. You see, so I, oh, go ahead, Tim. Go, go ahead. on. No, 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 go. So I want to play devil's advocate here. And I'm playing devil's advocate because I do fall on the, on the side of the conversation, I want to say. So I believe what I'm saying here. First of all, I think he has the right to ask to be moved because it's his career, right? Like, Yo, if you, if you want to play and, you know, you'd put all the work in to get here. If you want to be moved, you have the right to kind of say it. But that conversation should happen behind the scenes, right? I, I think that you've got the right to go and ask to be moved. You've got the right to be asked to be shopped, as we'll call it. But again, I just don't think you need to do that publicly. Okay. I think if you're asked about it, you can react, reply tactfully and kind of imply without saying um, I also think that, you know, this is the lowest minutes per game average of Pritchard's career since coming into the league. Mm. He he had to kind of stomach playing behind Dennis Schroeder last season. Dennis Schroeder gets moved, Pritchard plays in a bigger role, and he's an important piece of the rotation all the way through to the NBA Finals. Well, you know, everyone knows what happened against the Warriors. The Celtics go out to build, bring in Malcolm Brogdon. All of a sudden, Pritchard's right down at the bottom of that ladder again. And those minutes are coming. He's playing now because Smart's out, because yeah. Brogdon's missing time or, you know, maybe Derek White needs a rest or whatever it is. His minutes are coming because other guys are out. He, he's right at the back of that, like, that rotation. So you want out, fine, I get it, I'm down. But don't be vocal about wanting to leave and then be like, yo, no, I'm happy here, really. You know, I didn't get what I wanted, so I'm cool. Like, if you handle it, quietly you don't have to answer these questions in the first place right but he's young he's new to the league this is probably the first time he's had any like this much media attention since he entered the nba because that because he you know you need something to talk about that's a little bit negative and when a team's as good as boston and as well run the biggest negative you've got is well peyton pritchard's not playing enough so he's kind of like in a position where he's being spoke about without really doing anything wrong to get spoke about and then over time, he's put himself in a position where now he has said some dumb shit. You know they, what I mean? They put a microphone in front of him. They asked him like how he's feeling about stuff, and he's a victim of this situation. I think Boston going out and getting Brogdon after already getting White. You know, you've got three really capable guards ahead of him. And granted, Derek White's been starting in a shooting guard spot um, because of when Rob was hurt. But I still don't even really know what the starting lineup's going to look like when everyone's fully healthy. Because I think they've had one game where you've seen all of the regular starters with the double bigs with Alan Rob on the floor, healthy and playing at the same time. So like the Celtics have got some stuff to figure out there. And I think that's sort of for Pritchard, as you said, Adam, like when people are hurt, he's getting time. I think, I think when he's playing his best and his stroke is there, it's fantastic. Um, and he's been playing really solidly uh, as of late, but uh, if you want a bigger role, man, 
you shouldn't have said any of this stuff. Like if, if you said it on the podcast, okay, fine. But then you've got like an article from Jay King. You've got an article from Gary Washburn. Like there was at least like two or three or four more articles that came out basically saying, oh, uh, you know what? I'm not happy here. I want like a bigger role. Like I know I can play basketball. Like I love basketball. I want to contribute to winning. And it's like you are on the best team in the NBA right now. You just came off an NBA Finals appearance, the first for the team since 2010. So what are we doing here, man? Like you you are this close again to go to a title and you can go ahead and win a ring and then figure out what you're going to do in the offseason. Like don't worry about it now because ultimately at the end of the day, it's just a distraction. I get that he's venting about not getting a bigger role, but like don't, don't let this just – distract you from what the like major goal is here i get wanting to play but like it, it seems like an un, unnecessary distraction to what's already been like a really good season so i just don't get why i don't get why he like he, i feel like someone should have been in his ear to tell him to not do that it's not what the pr team's for bro i know but I like his know. own like his agent should have been like hey like just yeah. don't do that like let me work in the back and instead of like well like, gary wants to talk to me it's like of course he's gonna talk to gary <laughs> He, he messed up on the podcast. That's where it started. And and regardless, people listen to the Evan Turner podcast. So people be people think that podcasts don't do anything. No, people listen because they're entertaining and they're informational and people are going to listen. And so once people listen, here comes the interviews. And now he's going to have to answer those questions with the lights and his, you know, cameras and all that stuff in his face. And unfortunately, like you said, he's young. But listen, that's not an excuse. Dude, like, here's the thing. I want a bigger role. I want to get paid more money. I want to do all these things in life too. But you know what? I got a job to do. I'm going to do my job be the best way I can, but I'll talk to my wife about it, you know, when I'm not at work. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to, he, there's just certain times to say that type of stuff. And I'm with Tim. It's a bigger picture. Imagine getting a ring, playing a role, being free, and then you can go make as much money if somebody's willing to take that chance on you. Just imagine. Like now you have a ring and now you have the experience. And I think for the Celtics, the reason why he's pushed down is because they realize that in order to beat this team, they need this module. In order to beat this team, they need this module. So now the Celtics look like they could be really great defensively when they want to. They could push a button, right? When they don't turn over the ball, they look highly efficient on offense, right? When they're shooting, there's not a better team in the NBA I didn't even know the Celtics can shoot like they can shoot because we're so used to them not shooting threes. Now they're hitting their threes. When they're missing, though, that's when it becomes a problem. But I'm just saying, Pritchard, you just got to put your big boy pants on, little guy, and just go out there and do what you do great. Play basketball. Not talk. I just want to say I am a big – I do like Pritchard. I think he could. And, like, I would like to see him on a team where he gets yeah. a consistent role because I think he could help. But for now, I do think he kind of navigated that situation poorly. Um, and that, now it's just kind of time to just, you know, play that role. Like, you're a role player. The the whole job description's in the first word. Role you know player. what I'm saying? You know, yeah. Not first two words, yeah. It's man. Like, you see how they got – they got they, – it, it is what it is. If you want to be more than a role player in the NBA, then you got to do more. You know, and when you get the opportunity to do it, do it. So my thing for him is take this opportunity, take this opportunity and show the Celtics that this is why you want that role. And that's what you got to do. Like, you know, instead of talking about it, just be about it. Just be about it. I like that. I like that. That's some, uh, uh, we're going to move on because I think what we can leave that right there. <laughs> uh, we got Mike Muscala up next. How's everybody feeling about Mike Muscala? He's had a good two game start. Defensively, I feel like there's a very specific role for him. I think if you ask him to become physical with a guy, he's going to get dislodged quite easily. I think he could get taken off the dribble if, he, if he's trying to close out to wing shooters or to corner guys. But as a drop defender, that's playing like I like to call it playing angles, right? And Al Horford's fantastic at this. You know, he's he old now. He's never really been an athletic guy. He's always been very good at cutting off angles and forcing guys into uncomfortable spots on the floor. And he's kind of just like. 
Jedi mind tricking them into going where he wants them to go because he's just eating the space where they're trying to get to. I think Muscala is kind of similar there. The three point shooting has been fantastic. He's been confident in that shot. He's, he's letting them fly. He's go screening well. He's sc- slipping screens well. I think he just fits everything you wanted from that a- additional big in terms of a floor space that it can defend a little bit. I think he's a little bit more mobile than Luke Cornett. The different in terms of Luke Cornett can protect the rim. Muscala is more of a, as I say, a positional slash team defender. Uh, I like him. I think he's a good pickup. Um, He's obviously not Jakob Pertl, but you don't have floor space in with Jakob Pertl. So, you know, it's just different apples to oranges right there. I'm damned, but it's only been two games, right? Like, I'm not going to claim that I've seen Muscala play a bunch. I, I haven't been going out of my way to watch a lot of Oklahoma City. I've watched a lot of Jar. Like, you know, I'll pull 100 Jar Morant possessions before Instat went and screwed me over, ripped me off for a few K. Um, I'm not happy about it. Uh-huh. Uh, so you got to plug that. <laughs> yeah, I'm fuming, dude. Like a couple of grand, man. And like now, like my whole scouting process is gone. Oh, so it's man. not, I can't, like, I don't even know how I'm meant to scout players anymore because they've just screwed me that bad. So, like, but before they screwed me, yeah, dude, I was pulling 100 clips of Shy perfectly fine. But I, I went out going out my way to watch fucking Mike Mascala. I, I didn't even know he was on our radar. Um, I knew we were, I knew we needed a big, but I I had other bigs in mind. Like uh, was it Mobamba? I thought maybe they'll they'll try to go out and get uh, one of those type of young athletic type of bigs. But yeah, the spacing, the shooting, it makes sense, right? Because the one thing that I know that the Celtics likes to do they like to stretch the floor and space it out, and 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 when you can shoot at all of the positions, it makes it harder to defend, and so. He seems like he's the perfect fit. So I was probably looking for the best fit, but sometimes you don't go with the best. You got to find the perfect piece. And right now he's working. Uh, and I don't see any, I, I don't know how they're going to, I don't know how teams are going to try to defend what it is he's able to do. You're not going to see him dribble and try to score in the paint, but I like the rotation that they're going to be able to, you know, mix in. You can get your rim guy in, Rob Williams, uh, Luke Cornett can get in there. They can get easy buckets at the rim. Luke is catching lobs now, and I think it's all due to the space. And so it's going to be really cool to see what type of sets you'll see him out there on the floor with two bigs, three big, like, you know, how, how they'll move him around in the rotation as well. They've been doing some funky stuff with it so far. They had a lineup where they had – Grant, Mike Muscala, and Luke Cornett out on the floor at the same time. And so it just it just gives them flexibility, right? And that three-point shot, like that's not fluky, man. Like that is very legitimate. I think right now he's I don't know what his percentage is on this year. I think it was close to 40%. Over the last three years, he's been shooting over 40% from three. And on his career, he's like a 38% shooter from deep. So that is a very real threat there in terms of three point shooting. And the fact is, is we saw it a little bit in his first game, like defenses are going to collapse on guys like Jason Tatum, if he's cutting to the hoop. And if Mike Muscala is waiting in that corner, ready to catch the shot and just immediately put it up. Like if he's able to hit that consistently, it, it just creates a whole lot more offense off of these, you know, these looks where he can play off ball and considering what they you know, had to give up to get him in terms of Justin Jackson, uh, these two second rounders. Like, I think it's a really, really solid pickup, especially for that cost. And I think he's, he's checking all the boxes that you need for that kind of cost in terms of salary too. Like it's not a, uh, it, it's not a Jakob Pertle. So it's not like this big sexy name or anything like that. It's not like someone you're going to have to worry about paying in the off season. Uh, he's cost controlled too. You got him for another year uh, if you want him. So yeah, I really like the move, and I think so far it's been really good. I want to see how it pans out like going forward, but I'm interested to see how they mix him into these lineups. I think it's really cool that they started to use him with the double big. Wayne, if you're a musician. Have you heard his rapping? Who's rapping? Mike Muscala's rap. No. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. I got to check it out. <laughs> Just type it into YouTube now and play it. You can play it by your phone so everybody can hear it. Like, it's no, you so don't want to. Is it, is it like copyrighted? I don't want oh, you. Nah, to. dude. It's like some so trash. It's like, I think no he did it. It's like a team promo thing. I'm pretty sure. It's pretty awful. have that as a promo. You're telling people not to turn up to the event? 
I think it was a joke, like, but like, you know. <laughs> I didn't see the funny side of it. It was an insult to my ears, dude. Have you found it, Wayne? I'm I'm looking. His hidden talent? Yeah. Burning the midnight oil. Gotta burn the midnight oil. Look, put it by the mic. I am. Let me get this commercial off for it. Is this where he was sitting being interviewed? Nah, he's like in a, he's like rapping, like rapping, rapping, like, you know, got <laughs> right, the swagger yeah. with him. Keep, keep talking. I'm going to find that joint, yo. yo. I see him. Mike, music, Mike Muscala rap. Let's see if this is it. Yeah. Stay screeching. I got three goals and I ain't talking about a hat trick. One, win the championship. Two, make a smash it. Three, have a baby with my lady, then some grandkids. These other rappers, shaky Charles backswing. Trying to find the recipe, I call them plankton. The flow so appealing. Best rapper in the league. Aw oh, man, what a feeling. Showing y'all like a spit. What up, Shaq? Sean Curry, Kenny, the Jet Smith. <laughs> What the fuck? What the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. Your face fruit wine was hilarious. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got to rip this and do a reel. <laughs> what was that? Like the only thing. The only thing I liked. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I liked. I don't liked when it like ended. It. That's when I liked it. When it stopped, <laughs> he—I didn't even know he was ending it. The, the, the video oh. just stopped. All right, Dude, I got. I got to come back and reevaluate that. Oh, that man. <laughs> that oh man! All right, it's a movie. <laughs> he just needs to stick the three-point shooting now. Man, he said, <laughs> "I'm gonna get with my wife and have some kids, bro." Yeah, right. I mean that's cool, but I don't know why you need to put Pull that in a trap. That's my <laughs> point. Like, why we, what, what, who? No one. No one. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's I don't I don't understand why that needs to be in the track. All right, moving on. We got the last one. We'll keep this one short and sweet. Jason Tate on the other day, everybody's seen the video by now, you know, clocked Jalen Brown in the face with his elbow when they were going for a loose ball together. It wasn't malicious but at all. Uh although I did see some people be like, Yo, Jason Tatum didn't look like he cared. Well <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I saw that. It was a thread on Reddit. <laughs> um but anyway, Tatum does this press conference. He's like, you know, I feel like I owe Grant, um, sorry, I feel like I owe Jalen Brown a car, something safe. You know, that's the type of apology I want to give. Jalen Brown is like, okay, that's the least I can do, right? I feel like I need to buy him a car or something. And the first time all season, me and him crash from the corner, I end up elbowing him in the face. Obviously, I feel terrible. It was a freak accident. But whether it's a mask or buying him a car, I think I got it. So that's what Tatum's saying. So the question I've got for y'all. See, I'll try and Americanize myself for you people. Y'all. Yeah. Um, the question I've got for y'all is does Jason Tate and OJ Lynn Brown a car? I mean, like he fractured his face accidentally. I don't think he owes him a car. Because he fractured his face. I think he owes him a car because he said, I owe him a car. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You can't say that. Like the yeah. cat's out of the bag. You open Pandora's box by suggesting. You get what that. I'm saying? You can't be a, a, a no, no back. I don't want to say these terms. We can't say stuff we used to say when we was growing up. So, you know, you can't be a, a blank giver. Like you, you can't be like, yeah, man, I'm, I, I'm going to get you a car. And then when that person, whether you was joking or not, you got to make sure you declare that it's a joke at the very beginning. Uh, you know, because if not, then all he- hell could break. This is what he, this is, I got the clip too. So hold on, let's see if it'll play. And it was Jalen. Jay, so Jalen Brown said that he didn't believe him anyway. But yeah, Jalen like, Brown's like, oh, he's lying. lying. He's, he's lying. Not he's not getting me a car. Yo, I'm still <laughs> crying from laughing so hard, man. <laughs> Process before someone buy you a car. Uh, he said he was gonna buy you a car. Did you talk to him about that? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Nobody told me this. No, first time you're right now. Yeah. Hey, you gotta cash in on that. Yeah, you, you said it twice, actually. <laughs> okay, cool. That was good. So he said he said a single car. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> You know, how tough is it to sleep? How tough is it to kind of operate every day when your face is broken? Uh, it's been, you know, it's been tough the last couple of days, but <laughs> if I'm about to get a car. Really. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Is it serious? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's trying to just plant it. He's going to turn it into a car. JTB lying, so. He's right, he's right here. Jason, I'm getting a car, bro. He said, Jason, Jason Tatum, I'm getting a car. <laughs> he lying. What <laughs> <laughs> he do like this? He do like that. He lying. He lying for sure. <laughs> Yo, that's so cool, man. Cause like I thought that Jalen Brown was getting so much. Like, I mean, I just, I just didn't think they were gonna keep Jalen Brown. I thought they were gonna try to trade him. The Kevin Durant story popped up. I didn't know if Jalen still wanted to be here. I didn't know what was going on. But to to hear this made me feel so much more at peace um, on that locker room and how those, those young men get along. You know what I'm saying? So that was, that was a good, that was a good press conference. That was before the game, but that was a good press conference. I, I want to know what car it'd be. He said, it's going to be a safe car. Um, a Prius. I, that was literally the first thing that came to my brain. I was like, yeah, a Prius. I like, broke your face. You can't fit in no Prius, yo. <laughs> Sorry, I broke your face. Here's a Prius. Here's a Prius, dude. I mean, I'm not say free, and I don't think I'm fitting in a Prius. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think that you could get like a, like a modified Prius. Dude, I couldn't fit in your car. Yeah, well, you know what? You, okay. you Have you ever heard the story about Wilt Chamberlain and the VW Beetle? So they took, they lowered the, I, know, I don't know the story, but I'm assuming they modified it. That's what I'm thinking. So the modification that they made, this is what I've heard, is that they just took out the driver's seat because it's got a back seat, right? And he so is so tall wow. that he was able to like have his hands on the wheel and have him sitting in the back seat of the bug, and that's how he would drive it. Wow. <laughs> out of all the cars that he could have driven. I think it was like an advertisement thing. <laughs> it's like Shaq and the Kia. Okay. I love the tweets about that. Where it was like, you know, you're too small for that car. <laughs> the car's too small for you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, so we've gone way off the rails. We went off the rails when we had the Mike Muscala video, and that's sure. my fault. I take no, full car. <laughs> you asked about the car. I want to play the video about the car. You what, what car, though? Like, what car? I mean, if it didn't, they weren't it specific break, with the car. Yeah, but if someone that? breaks your face, like, if you've got a facial face, like, you personally, and then they're like, yo, I'm going to buy you a car. And the guy that said it, oh, I like, mean, you're going to have to, you're going to have to hit me up with a Don't buy him a Tesla. <laughs> or a Bugatti, man. I, like, I, I'm going to need, you know, uh, do I get the pick? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because we, <laughs> yeah. I, I think Tatum should just take him shopping. I and want a 67 <laughs> Impala, man. If you're offering me any car, I want a 1967 Impala. Candy paint? Dope, but I don't know if it's safe, but. <laughs> uh, well, well, well. It ain't safe. Honest, man, <laughs> I'll take any car from the 70s because they were made out of metal. So those mm. cars were safe. Much more safe than these fiberglass cars today. So I'm actually with them. Okay, Matter of fact, give me a Cadillac that just in case somebody try to, you know, <laughs> y'all saw the, y'all saw the movies. Just give me a Cadillac. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> and I want and I want a yacht as well, just in case there's a zombie. Ah, uh, he said car. You can't ask for a yacht. See now that's that's okay. So now I want a duck boat. I'm changing my answer because that's la- that's that a is not a car. It, well, it is. It, it drives on the road and then it drives in the water. That is a technically a vehicle. It's a car. Technically, okay. How many axles? Because that's what it's gonna come down to when you go to the. I'm not the, a mechanic, dude. It's got oh. like six axles. At yeah, least. so that's not a car. You might have eight. Actually, that's definitely not a car. <laughs> it's a land aquatic vehicle. <laughs> it is not a car. <laughs> you go to the motor vehicle department. It is like, something much more than a car. Four axles, eight axles. <laughs> I'm pretty whatever. sure it's got like a lot of wheels on each yeah. side. I think it's four wheels on each side minimum. I never went on a duck boat when I was in. Yeah, Boston. well, next time you come, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna probably not gonna do it that time either because it's cold as hell. That water's gonna be iced. Dude. Oh no, not like that. Not that soon. All right, then everybody, <laughs> we're gonna wrap it. Up. <laughs> Wayne, man, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Uh, that was, this was fun. This Tim, was as always, it's been a pleasure, my hombre. Everybody watching, make sure to go smash that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Hit that yeah, like, hit that dude. Like thing. And uh, we'll be back again on Friday, y'all. Friday, not too far away. Deuces. Cheers. <laughs>